Uh, welcome everyone to another episode of FortuneBuilders.tv. You caught me kind of off guard here. I'm enjoying some tasty Halloween cookies that were provided to me by my good friend Dave Lupica, who's always behind the camera. Welcome to another episode. Very excited to be here. And actually, yes, if you recognize these glasses, they were stolen. Uh, well, actually, they were taken and uh, from my arch nemesis. Uh, Inspector Gadget, some of you may know from an earlier episode of FortuneVillage.tv. I ran into him at a job site earlier today. I just couldn't take it anymore, so I, I took him from him, and I'm going to wear him, and I'm going to wear him, and then I'm going to enjoy him every day. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk a little differently, and I'm actually going to do our first uh, case study training. These are good cookies, Halloween style. So last week, we had a uh, wholesale package extravaganza where I talked about how to wholesale houses. <clears throat> Excuse me. And actually, we had a lot of good feedback and what people asked for was an actual case study training. So that's what I'm going to do. Actually, about that house. If you missed that show, go back and watch last week's show on the wholesale package and what it is and download the actual deal analysis of that house because that's what I'm going to be talking about on this week's show. Let's break it down so you can learn from it and talk about how you can make money on a similar deal or something like it in your market. So that particular property we purchased actually initially as a rehab, okay? It was Mission Cliff Drive. And the first thing that you need to know are the big three numbers. The big three numbers are the after repair value, the rehab cost, and then what you're going to offer for the house, your purchase price or your offer and your offer price. So on that house, um, the actual after repair value, when it was in its best condition, was about eight hundred and sixty to eight hundred and ninety thousand dollars. Now, it's in San Diego on a hill with views. You know, unique home. So the ARV we're going to say is eight fifty, being conservative. The second of the big three numbers, excuse me, is the repair cost. The repair cost of that house to get it into that best shape so it could sell for that price was about eighty thousand dollars okay now it could it could have easily gone up to a hundred and ten thousand dollars depending on some of the finishings but for a nice quality product that wasn't going to put too much of our own um, uh, our own personal taste into was going to make a very nice house for someone to move into was going to be about eighty to eighty five thousand dollars now if you go backwards with those numbers and get to a purchase price using a very common formula called the Mayo formula, the maximum allowable offer formula, right? Uh, you take the after repair value, I'm going to use my trusty new iPhone that I just got today. The Mayo formula is the after repair value, which let's just say is 850, times 0.7, times 0.7, minus repairs, which I said were $80,000. So that would put that particular deal at a, at a uh, maximum allowable offer price of about $515,000. $515, now that mail formula doesn't always work on higher price properties because the spreads are different, the numbers are greater, so it doesn't always translate. But on that particular property, where the after repair value in its best condition was 850, I'm saying conservatively, that house was listed in, in crappy condition for $850,000. So the seller at that point was not very realistic, okay? Now, if we hadn't offered on the house thinking that the seller wouldn't take our offer, we would never have had an opportunity to wholesale that deal. But what we did is we got to an offer price. On that particular house, it was $550,000. $550, that we uh, offered on the house, okay? And um, we ended up getting that offer accepted and buying the house. Now understand, if you look at a house that's in disrepair that um, is listed for that for more than it's worth and you don't offer on it because you think the seller isn't gonna take the offer, you miss out on opportun opportunity, period, right? So you need to get to your offer price and offer it um, whether or not you think they're gonna accept it or not. Get it in, make it strong, get it done. All right, so this show actually got uh, a little long and has a lot of content. That's the end of part one. Stay tuned for part two.